Hey guys, Heavy Arms 45 here. Now, I've done a couple verse videos for y'all. And yes, we're doing this quarantine thing right now. Um, but I've asked a couple times for y'all to give me some. And I haven't got many of them. But it's cool to see that, you know, uh, y'all do enjoy them. Because the versus one seems to get more views than anything else. So, um, But on the other side of it, I've had some family that's been giving me suggestions of different fights they would like to see. And at first I was sitting up here and I was like, those wouldn't work. Like as soon as they would tell me, I'd tell them why they wouldn't work. But I figured I would at least, at least I could try and do a couple of them on here. And I'm going to try and do a few immediately well i'm gonna do all four of them that they've given me right now on this one video and see what y'all think about my thoughts on um one of them they did that i had to take out completely was escanor versus um escanor versus maliotis because i believe recently in the anime they actually did have a fight between escanor and maliotis and um i'm not gonna do one that they've already actually had uh put into canon what happened between two people like they'll be saying what will happen between naruto and sasuke well we've already seen what can happen between naruto and sasuke because they fought each other multiple times you know it's not a you know we just try one time thing it's it happened so um starting off this one is a quick and simple one it's hakagori from uh my hero academia slash the invisible girl versus senku from dr stone that's a one-sided fight um would they ever fight no because senku is not a physical person he is not somebody who actually does any type of um, physical activity at all. So it would be not something that he would do to actually try to pick a fight with a girl. Or even think that he could pick a fight with a girl. Um, with prep time, he could try to do something against her. But what can you do against someone who's invisible? You wouldn't know when they're there. And prep time would not help if... She basically is there the whole time seeing what you're doing. So, right then, Haku, Hakugore is sort of the win winner either way of that situation because he couldn't fight her at all. Because he has no way of defending himself against her. Um, the next one they gave me was Natsu versus Rin from Blue Exes. Um... I don't see this. I don't see these two going up against each other. Most of the fact because when it comes to um, Blue Exorcist, uh, Ren is trying to keep himself from being a devil like his um, father is. So he's very. He's also a very close combat person. I. On the other side, you have Natsu, who is, yeah, he's not the smartest person, but who, what main character of a shonen is actually intelligent a lot of times? It, it's rare. It does happen, but it's very rare. I mean, like, Naruto, Luffy, uh, Goku, not intelligent, but they can fight good. In the same way, you have Natsu. Um... When it comes to that, um, the thing that kind of makes it to where I'm going to say that Natsu will win is because Natsu has a lot more range abilities with his spells than Ren does. And also, um, he can eat Ren's fire. Because the fire that comes off him, as long as it's not Natsu's own fire, he can basically eat any fire that's in front of him. No matter 
who made it or what it is. Because we've seen him eat what was supposed to be, um, what was it, God Slayer magic uh, fire. It was difficult for him at first, but he finally was able to eat it or thought about eating it. It was one of the two. But that was something that he was able to do. So I give that win to Natsu just because of his range abilities. Uh, if you don't agree, fight me. Um, then this one is a little bit more interesting. Gone versus Deku. Gone from Hunter x Hunter versus Deku from My Hero Academia. I think this is one of the, no, this is not the first time I've had a main character battle, uh, on here. But when you're dealing with these two, Gone and... I had to ask specifically which gong did they have to talk about. And the gong specifically they're talking about is Final Phone Gong. When Gong was on his last legs after uh, he decided to put his all into this fight um, at Paradise Gardens. I mean, uh, yeah. So that was a good fight. It's um, his height increases, his power increases in general, um, is supposed to be able to match the head of the Chimera Ants when he was that form, that's why, um, the general of the Chimera Ants was happy that she fought him instead of their leader because she figured that with, uh, he could have actually been possibly equal to their uh, master at that point. But when it comes to fighting, um, Deku hasn't gotten through uh, leveling up. That's one thing. Um, the thing about this is, is that if I said Gon versus Deku... I'm giving it to Deku, um, not because he's the best, but I think that he, if they got into an actual fight, he wouldn't stop. Um, Gon has, even though he gets intense power, he has somewhat of a time limit because if you remember after he took that final form, he kind of almost died afterwards. Um... Yeah, he, he did it all it took a couple of things kind of working out to where he didn't die. But he almost died from uh, dealing with uh, that com that general chimera ant. And all of it was for a friend, of course. But um and he was able to lose a body part during that he was very durable but it was a limited power and it wasn't the damage she did to her that almost killed him it was using this power because it was kind of like um final sangetsu from bleach it after that power was there it was the end or uh when yusuke used uh his soul energy instead of his spirit energy to fight, um, fight one of the Saint Beasts in one of the earlier parts of Yu Yu Hakusho. Um, yeah, I just got, watched that again, so I it's fresh on my mind. So when he was fighting that guy, uh, he get used his soul energy. I mean, no, not soul energy, life energy, to um, try and defeat these. Uh, to fight the saint beast and he almost died from it and with that being said Deku doesn't have a limit uh, he's also always thinking he now the downside for Deku would be is that he doesn't know gone um, and also uh, if we went down to it I wouldn't think that gone would use his final form because he knows if he uses it, it's the end. Because if he does use that final form of his, he would die. And 
the only reason he was willing to do that was because he knew his friend Kite uh, was killed by this creature. But if he used it, I think Deku could keep him at a distance or even fight at his level long enough to um, actually take him out or possibly uh, win just by well if you've watched the anime up to uh, season 4 he's actually been able you know Deku now has a range attack to keep people away from him so he actually could keep away it's kind of a fight between the rock paper scissors versus um Deku's new air attacks. Oh, also, if you've seen the movie, you would know about this too. You know, everyone he's upgraded himself, and Deku is constantly getting better and better at doing his um uh, job at um uh, trying to be the world's greatest hero. Um the last one that I have, and it's a one-sided one to me again. Um, it's uh, Sage of Six Paths, Naruto versus Luffy. Um, there's a lot of stuff. I love Luffy. I, I think I've said this a couple times. I am I enjoyed watching the whole show uh, when it was just... Um, me trying to get through one piece so I could get to where it is now. Uh, that being said, and I, you can hear my voice in my riff and say, not Ruto's on the whoop the floor with uh Luffy, and it's not because both of them are not geniuses. Don't get me wrong, but um, the powers that Naruto has kind of outweighs what uh what luffy has because when you get to luffy luffy has a lot of stuff that he doesn't have any range attack like his arms can do range but when you say that when you get into naruto you have his karama biju bomb and his um he also has his uh, wind shuriken that he does, and he has his Rasengan, yeah, and his Rasengan wind shuriken, and uh, his shadow clones. That, and none of them are weak at all. Um, Naruto could actually do a little bit of barrage on uh. A little bit of barrage on Luffy, and Luke. Don't get me wrong. Luffy is fast. You can put him in any gear that he wants, and he could take out a good amount of them. But that's a we've seen Naruto's powers take out a mountain. Uh, we've seen him take out a lot of different things. A lot of stuff dealing with Luffy is person to person. We haven't seen mountain busting powers from him um you know if he was able to do mountain busting powers i think he could have uh, completely annihilated well at least could have got one good punch on kaido um in the anime when he fought kaido he is getting stronger don't get me wrong but to the level of being able to fight uh, Naruto in his Sage of Six Paths form, uh, not yet. Um, I would have to see more of what, um, more of what they're going to, how they're going to develop Luffy before the end of the anime, which, as I understand, is not far away. We're about 85% through the anime now. You know, Wano is going on now, and then as we get through Wano, who knows what will happen. Um, you know, we might, and me laugh, they get to Raftle and get uh, the whole show's over with after that point. Um, but yeah, these were some that my family has given me. And 
you know, I'm glad that the thing it's always good to have people listening and you know, everybody won't have their thoughts put out there. So these are the ones they gave. Um and these aren't bad fights, it's just one sided fights. You know, each one of these, everybody will give they all into it. Um and I don't you know I don't blame those characters for not being on different because each anime has its own level of doing things. Um could Naruto beat Goku? No, not not in my mind. Not not uh Dragon Ball Z Dragon Ball Super Goku, he couldn't beat him. Um because they're on different levels. There's a different power scaling on each one of these characters that you have to look at. And could do I think that um uh, I about to say Kisaki from uh, Tokyo Ghoul. Could he fight Luffy? Yeah, he could fight Luffy. I think Luffy will completely annihilate him, but yeah, he could fight Luffy. Um, you know, there each when you watch each one of these shows, you have to realize that there is some level of um, power scale in that these. Even though they are powerful in their own world, they're not that powerful if you go to somebody else. Like when I was talking about uh, Saitama in uh, Saitama versus Krillin. You know, Krillin, everybody's like, he's a basic character. He couldn't beat, uh, he couldn't take Saitama. But it's because you have to look at it, you're looking at trying to bring his feats from his world into the world of the Dragon Ball world. His feats in Dragon Ball would be nothing compared to the feats of Krillin, uh, possibly Yangcha in some cases. Um, you know, if because these guys are basically, they could have, they've been able to destroy mountains ever since the beginning of Dragon Ball Z. And you're talking about you're having them fight in Super where they've trained as they not at the same level. You know, to be able to fight someone or even spend time where you could imagine fighting somebody like Frieza back during Namek, Krillin had to be able to at least fight someone the level of Vegeta back when the Saiyan saga was going on. You know, it's not that this person is just like stagnant. Even though this person can't fight as good as, um, let's say, just because he wasn't able to beat Cell during the Cell games or even fight a Cell journey, doesn't mean that on his own he didn't wouldn't have been able to. You know, like I'm talking about Krillin right now. He wouldn't be able to fight Frieza. When it comes to Saitama, Saitama has not found anything that can push him anymore. He's just, he's found the top and he's stuck there now in his world. If he, and you can say that he can fight Vegeta and it'll be, he'll completely destroy him or Goku, but I disagree with it just because that's a whole totally different power setting. You know, a lot of stuff that he's been doing, a lot of, like I said, DBZ characters have been able to do. But, you know, like I said, it's a totally different um, way of looking at the fights because you have to think about scaling their actual feats to, like, what they were able to do before. Um, would I have, would I put, uh, who am I thinking of? What I put, like, out of the people that I had fight earlier, I probably would not put, um, uh, 
Natsu versus Gon. Because that's a one-sided fight to me again. Um, Gon is, Gon's rock, paper, scissors is basically a fire attack. Which isn't bad for an attack, but Natsu eats fire. So all he would be doing is basically feeding his opponent more fire. Um, Luffy versus Deku might be interesting. I would probably have to give it to. I I I, I probably would have to give it to Deku. Even though I like I, I like Luffy. Luffy is one is one of my top characters in One Piece. But you know. I'm about to call him, he's a, he's mini Might. you know, Deku is mini Might. it's, uh, he can do about the same amount of fighting that, uh, Luffy can, and, you know, the thing that will probably take care of thing is that, uh, them, The thing Luffy could use is his gear fourth. Probably Snake Man. And the thing that will help him a lot more is probably his ability to predict his opponent's move. Not actually, like, he literally can see into the future somewhat and know what his opponent is going to do. Which improves his abilities. The reason that that wouldn't have helped against uh, Naruto is because some of his attacks are enormous. Um, so it's not just having to read his ability, but it's having to dodge some of these abilities. Um, and Luffy is not much of a dodger. He kind of takes a lot of attacks head on, um, which is the problem. He doesn't, he literally does not think before he fights. Um, while Naruto does have to think all the time when he fights. Um... I think I've ran all these people into the ground enough. So, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and end it here. I hope y'all enjoyed this, and I'll catch you later.